Today we're looking at coins uh, I picked up from my most recent trip to my favorite local coin shop. And we're going to go ahead and get my favorite one, the one I can't wait to talk about. Uh, we're going to uh, bring this one up first. I did pay $10 for this coin, and I probably put in the title what this is. It's going to be a Mondi coin from Britain. From That's a 1937, not 57 up there. Does feature the monarch George the Sixth. We'll see his portrait on the other side, and this is a silver two pence. There's a catalog number of eight forty-seven. So we're going to zoom in as close as this camera is going to let me. Flip it over. Show you uh, the monarch here. So, a Mondi coin relates to the holiday of Easter. The Thursday associated with Easter is Maundy Thursday. And there has been a tradition dating back to Charles II of the, uh, the king or queen going to an important church in Britain and giving alms to the poor. And over the years, that has changed to be coins specifically minted for the occasion in low numbers. And that's what we have right here. So it's my understanding, of course, uh, it, there's probably a lot of people who would love to be a part of this and very few actually get chosen to uh, actually attend but it's my understanding that you take the monarch's age. So, for instance, Queen Elizabeth, when she was age, let's say, 90, she had 90 sets of these coins to give away to men and then another sets of 90 to give these away to women. The set consisted of a 1, 2, 3, and 4 pence. And so you could go back to George the Sixth, and, and he would have... Uh, it's the same four coins ever since they started this tradition. There is an incredible collector value to these coins, and so I am told that the people who are fortunate enough to receive them, at one time it was generally considered poor people, people down on their luck, but now it's more given out to old people. So when the service is over, there are collectors outside who are offering them cash on the spot in exchange for the sets. And so in many years, most of the years that uh, Queen Elizabeth was the monarch, she actually handed these out to uh, the people who were in attendance of the service. Now, one thing that makes these special is so this tradition goes back to uh, when the British were using the pre-decimal system. So at that time you had a, a one penny, a three pence, six pence, shilling, and so on. You didn't have a, a, a two pence or a four pence. And the one pence was the large copper penny. So let's, let's take this back for a moment and see how small this coin actually is. That's, that's really tiny. This is going to be one of the smallest coins in my collection. So for many years, the British currency um, was made out of silver. A lot of their coins were made out of silver. Around the 1920s, early 20s, uh, they went from sterling. They cut it to 50%. This one's going to be 50%. And then around 1947 or so, they stopped putting silver in their coins. And they came out with that um, brass-looking uh, three-pence coin. They still made the one, two, three, four Mondi coins out of silver. They went back to sterling at that point. The three pence would be, I suppose, nearly indistinguishable from a circulating three pence. But if you're not going to issue a one, two, or four, then you can definitely tell those are 
part of the set. Oftentimes they are given a proof-like look. Now, I said earlier that there were only a number given out by the king or queen based on uh, the monarch's age. But the the royal mint still produced uh, almost 2,000 every year because they had they would sell them as sets they would uh, have uh, they would be given to important people and, and things along those lines so it, it's not so rare that there's you know less than 200 out there but there are about less than 2,000 of them out there when you account for all of the ones that are uh, that they come up with so to get this one at ten dollars I think is a fantastic price but there's a catch, sort of. In 1937, it, this was the first year that I believe George VI would have been part of this tradition, they made an extra 26,000 proof sets to go along with the uh, 1,500 and, and 1,325 that they would have traditionally made. And so, this one is either one of the actual set or one of the 26,000 proof coins. Can I tell it apart? No, it doesn't really have any proof-like features. I would say that it is in MS-60 condition, I suppose. The book value in this coin is going to be $45. So... Imagine a one-pence coin that was half the size of this one. And then you have the, the threepence, which is, like I said, looks like a circulating threepence. And then there was also fourpence. Now, there were times that Britain used a silver fourpence. And I know I have a um, some coins like that which are were not intended for circulation in Britain, but instead will say, appear to be a British coin, but intended for circulation in other countries. And so I do have a Victorian fourpence that would otherwise appear to be in a set like this, but there were many thousand more of those made available. So it, it can be kind of tough to know, is this actually a Monty coin or not? But uh, I looked this one up before I bought it, and I found this one was only available as a Monty coin, so I, I couldn't be getting a 50-cent coin that I was paying $10 for or something along those lines. So, by the way, the fourpence also sometimes has the name of a groat. So, my catalog says this uh, coin books for $45. I went ahead and added up the uh, the minage of the ones actually made in Monty sets compared with the 26,000 proof sets. There's 27,325 of this coin. That makes it seem like this might not be as rare as as many of the others, but the the catalog doesn't really distinguish the price on that. So this one is 50% silver. If you're just paying for the silver in here, this isn't even 40 cents, I don't think. But I'm not paying for the silverness of it. I'm paying for the rarity of it and um, just the first one that I have. Now, the, my, my coin store had a bunch of these. Uh, when I bought it, I actually didn't realize that they made 26,000 proofs of them this year. I just thought, hey, the Elizabeth ones, the George Six ones were the same price. Might as well get a George Six one. Might as well get a two pence instead of a one pence. So next time I'm going to go back and uh, when I pick up one of these, take a closer look. So the everything else in this video is going to be uh, coins out of uh, the dealer's two for a dollar bin. And there's another 21 coins here. We're going to start with a coin from Haiti. And these coins that are from the early 1900s almost always are incredibly well worn. Here it is. This one is a larger coin, but very well-worn, pretty much as well-worn as any others that I've picked up from about 1907. This one features President Nord Alexis, KM56. 
So for the rest of these coins, I paid a total of $10.50 for the whole lot. And I'll tell you what some of the, uh, the valuable ones are going to be out of these. But this next one actually is uh, the most valuable, according to the catalog. <clears throat> you see this design? It's going to be a uh, Saudi Arabian coin. If you can't read the Arabic writing on here, they pretty much look the same for pretty much the last 50 years. They have changed it up in the last decade or so, but you come over here, that looks like a backwards three in that number. Uh, it looks like 1300, it's really the Arabic date of 1400, which translates to 1980. The last coin was KM56 from Haiti. This one's coin KM56 from Saudi Arabia. It's a 50 halala is the currency on here. It's half a real. And this one has a book value of $3.50. Move on to a, um, a coin from India. This one is a three paisa from 1965 made of aluminum. So it's kind of a soft metal. So it does get scratched pretty easily. This comes from a time where of this, um, the three-headed statue that appears on these early country of India coins after they were free from Britain. There are three different obverses, and so this is version one of three. You don't have to look for the discrepancies. You can usually tell by the date. We'll move to a coin from Canada. This is from the Canadian 125th anniversary of the Confederation, so it has the date of both on here. This was made in 1992. Canada was formed in 1867, at least the Confederation was. And during this year, they had a quarter for every province and territory in Canada. So there was a set of 12 of these. This one is the Northwest Territories, and it features the Inuit funeral cairn and it essentially stacks up a bunch of stones that makes it kind of look like a um, a person standing up next up we have a coin from fiji this one is from 1969 this is the 20 cent coin from fiji and this features a it's called a tabua on a braided scented senate cord and so this is, uh, I didn't know what that means. I looked it up. So the thing that's on the cord here is a whale tooth. This was used in uh, Fiji ceremonies. It's a ceremonial decoration. This one is KM31. The Canadian coin was KM212. We'll move to a coin from France. This is a one-year coin from 1903 for 25 centimes. And so it, it kind of has a different look than a lot of the French coins that you'll see from the early 1900s. Although this uh, side has the, uh, the lady figured on here. So this one has a, to the left of 1903, it has the Paris privy mark of a cornucopia, and then it has the Mint Master's privy mark of a torch to the right of 1903. This one is CAM 855, and books for a dollar. Next we have a coin from Brazil. This one is a 20 Cruzeiros from 1983. A lot of etched lines going through it. Flip this one over, and it has a cathedral on it. This is the uh, Francis of Assisi Church. This coin was made for uh, four years, and then in 1985 to 86, it was made at a reduced size. That one is KM 593.1. Next, we have a coin from Trinidad and Tobago. A five cent coin featuring a bird of paradise. Flip this one over. It does have some unusual toning on it, but it has the crest of uh, Trinidad and Tobago from 1991. Kind of a weird discoloration on, on that one. 
So in 2017, that coin became magnetic because they changed the metal center in it. So that one was KM30, but after 2017, it's 30A. This next one is a currency from a place that you might not uh, know ever made coins. We're going to have Qatar and Dubai. Some people call it Qatar instead of Qatar. So they only made coins uh, together for a short while. That looks like 1977, but it's really 1966. Their date of 1386. And even though they had a common currency they, they, uh, that had to do more with uh, no longer being ruled by the British than anything else, they had a common currency, but they essentially were separate places. Uh, separate rulers and separate governments and whatnot, just with a common currency that existed between both. Now, a couple of years after this, Qatar made their own currency. Dubai, uh, you're probably familiar with them being uh, one of the most famous places in uh, the United Arab Emirates. And so they never made their, I don't know if they ever made their own Dubai currency, but now would be part of the United Arab Emirates. So that one was a uh, 25 dirhams. There's our 25 dirhams. And there were not a lot of coins made from here. So this one's KM4. That one books for a dollar. Next we have a coin from Finland. Or a Suman Tasa Volta. 1955. There is a heat and mint mark. There by the bottom of the left foot, right there. This one is a tin marka. And the tin marka is a uh, KM38. There are a couple of variations of this that are not noted in the catalog. One of them has to do with the length of the roots on the tree here. The other has to do with the, uh, the size of the number one in 1955. That one is uh, KM38. Next we have a coin from uh, Lebanon. We have a uh, Gregorian date and a Arabic date on here. However, they're both the same number this time. So 1968 is the number in both numeral systems. So they did not convert this to an Arabic number, which would have been something like 1388 on this year. But it is... Uh, a Lebanon, they're known for their cedars, so that's probably the tree that's on here, I'm guessing. This one's a uh, 25 piastres, and it has the 25 in both uh, number systems. This is made out of nickel brass. It was made for about four different years over several decades, but in 1980, the 25 is wider on here, and it has a different KM number. But the one that I was holding was KM27.1. Here we have a coin from South Africa featuring, uh, as a lot of coins did uh, during this time, uh, one of the fa early founders of, of uh, South Africa, at least the founder of Cape Town, uh, Jan van Rabiek. From 1967, there are two versions of this coin. This one has Suid Africa written on it instead of the word South Africa. So it's the Afrikaans legend. Since there are two different versions of the coin, we flip this one over. It's a two cent coin featuring a white tailed new GNU new animal, or people from my generation might call it the GNU. That coin was uh, KM 66.2. We're going to move to Germany, and this will appear in your Weimar Republic portion of the catalog, 1923A. So it has a Berlin mint mark of A. That also makes that the most common mint mark of this one-year coin, the first year of uh, the Weimar coins. This one is, of course, a 500 mark, uh, KM36. This one is a $2.50 coin. It was only made one year, and it was made out of aluminum. 
The following year, one mark coins were made out of silver, so at some point there must have been some uh, revaluation going on to take care of it. This one's pretty good coin, books for 250 since it was only a uh, one-year coin. And so a really neat eagle design on here. There was a very similar looking 300 mark coin that was also made the same year. This next one might be the largest coin of the video. This one is from the Dominican Republic. And so, Republica Dominica, Dominicana. So it has a design that we see on a lot of their coins. On here, we flip it over to the head side. It is half or medio peso from 1967, featuring their version of Lady Liberty. This one is km 21 a.1 and it has the 12 and a half grams written on it. Uh, this is the first year that this coin was made not of silver. And so a lot of these um, Latin American coins were good about telling us exactly how much weight was to the coins for those of you who needed to know what the silver content was back back in those days, but then it made it confusing when there wasn't any silver anymore, but it, it, they still needed to tell you the weight on it. So uh, that's why it has kind of a weird number of 21A.1, so it's A because it's no longer silver, but then uh, it's a point one because a couple of years after that it was no longer smooth reading, and they changed it to a, uh, or a, it was, now it's a smooth edge, but they changed it to a readed edge, that's version point two of that coin. But if we're going to look at silver coins, we're going to uh, come across the only one that I found in the uh, bin this time. I found some good ones recently, but not this time. I, I paid 50 cents for each coin, and this one has about 75 cents worth of, of uh, silver in U.S. money. This one is a 10 cents coin from 1937. Not the tiniest coin in the video, but pretty close. This one uh, is from the Netherlands, featuring uh, Queen... Wilhelmina, and then this one is uh, a KM163. It's 64% silver, so it has a silver weight of 0 .0288. That's where we get our 75 cents of uh, silver out of that one. We'll move to a coin from Romania. This was soon after they became a republic. The uh, five lay coin. Featuring their new crest uh, with an eagle. 1993. KM114. This coin is made out of nickel plated steel. Next we have a coin that is a Portuguese controlled country. It's a 20 centavos. A lot of the Portuguese-controlled countries had coins that looked a lot like this one uh, for a long time. This one uh, was when they controlled Mozambique in 1961. So I believe this is a one-year coin. It's KM85. Portugal controlled Mozambique until 1975. Our next coin is from Kuwait. It's going to look like most other coins from Kuwait, except it's smaller and made out of brass, where the others are more of a uh, copper nickel look to them. If we've got the, the one on top of the fills on here, the name Kuwait written at the bottom. Then we turn it over, we've got the sailboat and a date of, here's another seven that, uh, it looks like a seven, really six. It's 1961 on our calendar. And this is a one-year coin. So every year after this, to my eye, I, I couldn't see what the difference was between this and the, the future years on here. But so take a look out. If you've got the coin that looks like it says 1971, but is really 1961, that's a one-year coin. So that gives it a little bit more of a premium since it's kind of harder to find that one. It's KM2 and the books for a dollar. We're going to swing back around to a British coin. 
Uh, this is a British penny featuring the last portrait of uh, Queen Victoria. This would be the uh, mature draped bust version of Queen Victoria. On the uh, one penny coin from 1899. This uh, portrait uh, began on the penny in 1895. So this might be one of the easiest coins of Victoria to find, but still uh, a lot of people would want to have it because uh, there are a lot of British penny collectors out there. That one is KM790. We're going to move back around to South Africa one more time where their five cent coin features a crane. And then... Pretty much anything in the 2000s, uh, all of their coin designs rotate through different languages of the spelling of the country. So on this one, it says Ningizimu, Africa. And since there are going to be 11 different versions of every coin, this one is in the Swazi, sometimes called Siswati language. So that's how you say South Africa in Swazi. Most of the Swazi speakers are in Swazi land, but there is a, uh, a region of South Africa that also does uh, use that language. This one is KM268. We've got one more to look at in this video. This one's going to be a token. It's a 25 cent gaming token. Not legal tender. 1000 Islands Charity Casino. It has an OC mint mark there at the bottom. That stands for the Osborne Coinage Company of Cincinnati. And we flip it over and it again says the 1000 Islands Charity Casino a 25 cent gaming token. Uh, I've never heard of this uh, casino before. It's weird to hear of a charity casino. I wonder if that's where it's a legalized casino and instead of uh, the house making lots of money, uh, instead it goes to pay for, well, in the state where I'm from, uh, the, the state-run charity has money that goes towards scholarships. So I wonder if that was the premise on this one. I am told it is a fairly small casino in Ontario that is today called the Shoreline Casino. All right, that's uh, our visit from uh, my favorite coin shop. I paid outside of the uh, the Maundy coin. I paid ten fifty for everything else in the video, and we had a total book value of seventeen eighty on those. For those of you who just think it's neat to keep a running tally on on what I uh, pick. All right, I'll uh, next time I go to the store, I hope to buy another of these, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.